Hi, I'm Beth Jeffrey from My Tutoring Bee, and today's goal is to show you how to use base 10 blocks in order to divide. So let's get into it. Um, I actually just have been seeing this method being asked of students that I work with. I do private tutoring. Um, and so I thought since some of my students have been seeing this method, that there's probably other students out there who could use a little help with how to divide with base 10 blocks. So we're gonna start off with 819 divided by 13. First, before we even get into the base 10 blocks, let's rewrite this division problem in a slightly different way. So instead of 819 divided by 13, I want to think of this as a multiplication problem. And division is just the opposite of multiplication, right? So I want to think of this as 13 times what number equals 819. So I want you to keep that, that in mind while we're working through this method. And that will help make this method make a lot more sense to those of you who might be going, what is this craziness? I, I don't understand. Don't worry, we'll get there. Okay, so the first thing um, that we need to set up is our base 10 blocks. And we are going to start with the 819. So that is that's what we call our dividend. So we need 800s. That's the blocks, sorry, the flat pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's our eight hundreds. We have one ten in this number, so that's going to be represented by a stick. And then nine ones. So we're going to use nine small dots to represent the ones place. Okay, so now we have this 819. And the goal of this process is to take all of this 819 base 10 blocks and separate them out in a way, reorganize them in a way that's related to 13. And again, what I want you to keep in mind is that, th that, that thought of 13 times what equals 819. So let's set up our um, area down here. I like to just put a little, a little rectangle. Um, some students I've seen don't use the rectangle. I like it just because it kind of separates the numbers that we are multiplying and the 819 that goes inside. Um, so you might see it in slightly different forms. Um, so our 13 is our divisor, right? That's what we're dividing by. So I'm going to set that up over here on the left hand side. So I need 110 and three ones to represent my 13. We're gonna always start with our largest place value, which is the hundreds in this case, and we're going to start dividing. So I'm going to actually take one of these hundreds and move it down into the rectangle down here. So that's where the, this hundred has just moved to. Now, why can I do that? How, how do I know that that hundred goes there in that position? Well, remember, we're trying to think of what else, sorry, what number times 13 is going to give us 819? So if I know that this 10 right here has to be multiplied by something up here in order to give me 100, well, that something up here has to be 10. So I'm going to use the yellow and put in a 10 right there. We want to eventually get to a place where we know that this 13 times whatever we get up here, this mystery number, that is going to be our quotient. That's going to be our answer to 819 divided by 13. Okay, so let's keep going with this. Back up a little bit, make this clean. Um, okay, so here I've got my 100 here, and I need to finish off this column. So I need to go all the way down through this 13 with using my 819 base 10 blocks and split it up so that it's creating their own little mini uh, multiplication problems. All right, so I know that I have a 10 here and a one here. So one times 10 equals 10. So that means I need to grab a 10 for my 819 and move it down into this rectangle. So let's do that. Here's a 10. I'm going to cross it out and then replace it right there. Okay. 
Again, I need to go all the way through the 13. So that means I need two more tens. I need a 10 here and a 10 here. I don't have any more single tens up here in my 819. So this is where we would regroup. So I'm going to take away one of these hundreds and regroup it as 10 tens. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now I haven't changed the value of this 819. I still have all of the 819. It's just in slightly different places now. But now, now I do have tens that I can complete this column. So I need two more tens. I'm going to take those away here and replace them down here. Okay, now we're ready to go to the next column. Same thing. I'm going to start with 100. I know that that 100 can fit right here, and the reason that I know that is because I can place a 10 up here at the top, and again, this 10 times this 10 equals 100. So that's how I know I can do that. Just We're always constantly thinking about what, what two numbers multiply to make this number that I'm putting inside of the box. Okay, so I'm going to continue this column. I know I need three tens to complete this column, so I'm going to take out three tens right here and replace them right here. So I'm just moving this 819 and putting it down into this rectangle until we get it all separated out and reorganized. All right, let's keep going. I've got another 100. I can put this other 100 here, three more tens, three more tens. Okay, great. And that means I need a 10 up here on the top to represent that multiplication. So you can see how this is This is going for right now. I am taking away 100. I'm taking away one, two tens. I only have two that time. So that means I need to regroup another 100 and take this one out. And that means that 100 regroups into 10 tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then I needed one more 10 to complete this column. There we go. And our 10 up at the top to, to notate. So you can start to see this number forming. Again, this number over here is 13, and then we're gonna wind up with something up, over here up on the top that's going to be that other factor, that other factor that's gonna multiply times 13 in order to give us 819. You can kind of see that starting to form up there at the top. So let's keep going. One more hundred gets placed here. And then we need three tens. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we need a 10 up at the top to represent that. There we go. Okay. One more hundred gets replaced down here. Three tens. Three tens. And 10 at the top to represent our factor. So we're, we've run out of hundreds now. We've gotten to the point where we don't have any more hundreds, so I can't put another hundred here. So we're going to back up. Now we're going to go down to the next largest place value, which in this case is the tens place. And we do have tens still available. We have three of them right here. Not to mention we still have all of these ones. So let me show you how this works out. Again, we're thinking that multiplication, if this, if this is 10, what can I put here that would multiply with 10 that would equal 10, right? Okay, so I'm going to cross out one of these 10s. Actually, let me, let me use a slightly different color for this part since we're kind of changing gears here. Um, I'll use this peach color. So I'm going to take away this 10 and it's going to go vertically here. Again, why? Why do I put it vertically there when I put all of these other tens horizontally before? That's because this is 10, and I need to figure out what times 10 equals 10, right? Because this is 10 also. So that means that a one has to go up here because one times 10 equals 10, okay? We're just taking that 13 and figuring out what number times 13 equals 819. And we're taking that 819 and moving it down into the box. I know I keep repeating that. I know I keep saying that over and over again, but that is really the, the main 
goal that I want to get across with this method because that really, once you understand that part, then it makes this method seem so much easier and make more sense. Okay, so we've replaced this 10 and put it down here inside the rectangle. Now what do we do for the rest of the column? Well, this is where we get into our ones that we have that are left up, up here from our 819. So this is one, this up here is one, what's one times one? It's one. So we're gonna take this, one of these ones, <laughs> and put it down here. Let's keep going. So that means I need two more ones to complete this column. There we go. Okay, I still have more of this 819, this original 819 left over. So we're gonna continue on with this same pattern now until we run out of tens. So our tens, we've got one 10 here. I'm gonna move it down here. I've got three ones, three ones, and all of that represents one up at the top. And then we've got this last 10 that I can put here, three ones three ones, and that represents one up here. Okay, so we've exhausted all of our original, these, this light, light green color base 10 blocks. I've used all of my hundreds, I've used all of my tens, even the tens that I regrouped, and I used all of my ones, and it all fits nicely down in here. So all of this represents 819. So what does that mean? I've been saying it um, throughout this video, what we're really looking for is what is this mystery number up here, right? Because that whatever that mystery number is, times 13 should equal 819. So let's count it up. We've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63. So this mystery number is 63 that we can uh, replace this question mark with, and that is the answer to our division problem. That's the quotient for our division problem. Okay, so we worked through a full problem. Yes, I know that this is not the most efficient method for division. Yes, I know that this takes so much more time and so much more space. Um, and, and the standard algorithm might work better uh, for you. As a tutor, as somebody who works with kids who often have problems understanding the basic algorithm because they are just taught by like this rote memory of how to divide using the standard algorithm. So I really appreciate having other methods to help students understand division. Not only does this help you get to the answer of the problem, but I think that by moving these pieces, it's a much more visual representation and it helps kids to see exactly why we get the numbers that we get for our answers. Um, so I don't know, for me, for, for somebody who is a math nerd and loves teaching students, I really appreciate this method. So I hope that this video has helped you learn how to do this method if you are coming across this with your homework. Um, yeah, so uh, I also have another problem set up after this, if you would like to find out more about remainders. What do you do when you get, when you have a remainder when you're using this method? So let's get into that. So we're going to set up our problem in the same way. I'm gonna take 223 and set up my base 10 block. So I need two hundreds, two tens, and three ones. I made this really simple on purpose so that it wouldn't be too lengthy. <laughs> so let's set up our rectangle here and we're dividing by 20 so that means I need two tens over here on the left hand side and we're going to work it the same way as we did before we're going to take away 100 we're going to start with the hundreds place and that means that we need a 10 up here on the top and then we're going to take away this other hundred and replace it down here 
Um, so that sets up that. That takes care of our 200. As you can see, this one's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, I've got two tens that are going to go here. Okay, and then that means I need a one up here to represent that. And then I've got, and then what do I do with these three? There's, there's nothing, there's, there's no way that I can take 10 over here and multiply it times anything to give me one. Um, so our three is actually our remainder. Once you get to this point where you, you know, are counting ahead and you don't have any place to put these extras, then this is your remainder. So our answer is we've got 10 plus one more is 11. So our answer is 11 with a remainder of three. Um, so yeah, again, I hope that video helps you understand how to do this method. I do offer one-on-one -on -one online tutoring. So you can click on the more info button. You can click on the little face that's gonna pop up uh, and head to my website and learn all about me and what my tutoring looks like looks a lot like this. Uh, thanks so much. Have a great day.